Before we get started on our knit project, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Today we're going to knit this marvelous triangle scarf using Mary Maxim Marvelous Chunky. For this project, you will need one ball of Mary Maxim Marvelous Chunky. Marvelous Chunky is a size 5 bulky weight yarn. It's a chunky yarn. And you'll also need a set of single pointed knitting needles. We're using size 10.5 US needles. They're a 6.5 millimeter gauge. We're starting our long tail cast on with a slip knot. So make a slip knot and insert your needle. You may have noticed that we are using a set of circular needles. It's the same gauge, it's the same size, but we're using a circular needle because we have a tendency to bang the camera with our straight needles. So it's just easier to film and it's easier to see if we use a circular. If you are a beginner, you're going to want to use a set of straight needles. It's a bit easier than these tiny small ones. Pinch the yarn and move your fingers down. Insert your fingers between the two pieces of yarn and hold the rest in your hand. Now form a bit of a Y. You see how the yarn makes a Y shape? You're going to um, slip your needle between the two pieces of yarn wrapped around your thumb. And you're going to go over, around, and through. Over, around, through. Over, around, through. If you'd like further demonstration on the long tail cast on, make sure that you stop by um, the, and click the link in the description. And always make sure that your yarn is moving up and down your needle freely. If it gets caught up when you start actually um, making your knit and purl stitches, it's going to be uh, a bit of a struggle. So see how these are nice and even? Consistency and tension are so important when knitting. Cast on 36 stitches and meet us at the next section of the video. So we've cast on 36 stitches. That makes for a multiple of 8 plus 4. So if you want to make it bigger or smaller, that's where your repetition is. So the way our ribbing is going to work, we're going to do 4 knit and 4 purl. We did the cast on 36 multiple of 8 plus 4 because we want to have the knit be on both sides of the ribbing. So to begin your knit stitch, you're going to insert your needle from the front to the back. And then you're going to wrap your yarn around counterclockwise. Pull the yarn through onto your second needle and slip it off the first. Now let's watch these knit stitches in slow motion. We've knitted four stitches and now it's time to purl. We're going to start by taking our yarn and moving it to the front of our stitches. We're going to insert our needle from the back to the front. And then again, wrap our yarn counterclockwise around the needle. Slip the yarn back onto the second needle and slide the loop off the first. 
Now let's watch it in slow motion. To complete the next set of knit stitches, you're going to want to move the yarn to the back of your work. Periodically, stop and count your stitches. You should, at this point, have four knit and four purl. Your knit stitches lay flat and there's a little bump at the bottom of your purl stitches. Continue in this manner, four knit, four purl, ending with your last set of knit stitches and meet us at the beginning of the next section of this video. So we worked a few rows, that way you could see how the knits and the purls work out. So you see the four knits were purls, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and ending with a knit. If you take a close look at your knit, when you flip it over, it's a purl. So the knit and the purl stitches are actually opposite. So after um, you finish your first row where you begin and end with a knit, you're going to start your second row with a purl. We're going to start with a slip stitch purl wise. So take your needle and insert it from back to front and just slip it on to your other needle. Now insert again as if you were to purl. And continue in your purl knit, purl knit, ending, starting with a purl group and ending with a purl group to the end of this row. While you're working on your ribbing, we wanted to take a minute and show you a couple of ways to troubleshoot your knitting work. So if you look here, it almost looks as if we have two stitches here on our first needle. Well, when actually what happened when we were doing our knit and purl, we didn't uh, move our yarn over. So we did this on purpose, that way we could show you a few things on how to troubleshoot common problems. This common problem has a really simple solution. All we're going to do is we're going to slide the yarn over the needle and so it lays flat again. In this very common problem, what we did is we should have done um, on the other side four purls, and instead we did two knit, per two purl. So now we've got to make these purl stitches knit stitches. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our trusty crochet hook and loop the yarn the way it's supposed to be looped. And then we're going to slide it back onto the needle. Making sure that it's going the right direction. And that our yarn is moving in the right direction. Let's do that again. We're going to slide it off. We're going to um, take our loop and we're going to move it around so it's facing the right way using our trusty crochet hook. And then we're just going to slide it right back onto the needle. One more quick thing we want to show you is how to fix a dropped stitch. So we're going to slide this loop back off and we're going to drop a couple of stitches. The very first thing you want to do when you drop stitches is you want to pinch where the stitches are um, still held together. That way you don't drop anymore. Then again, you're going to take your trusty crochet hook and you're just going to loop those stitches around. You're just going to loop the stitches around so they're nice and flat and where they're supposed to be. So we are um, picking up and fixing a few rows of this dropped stitch here. When you've got them all set, go ahead and slide that right back onto your needle. And you can continue your work.
our ribbing is at about an inch and a half, so we're going to start our garter stitch next. The garter stitch is one of the most basic stitches, and it's a stitch that every knitter should have in their repertoire. We're going to start with a slip stitch purlwise, and then we're just going to knit across the whole row. So there's no moving the yarn back and forth to make sure that we've got the yarn in the right spot for a purl. It's just a knit. We're going to keep the yarn in the back and knit our entire row. So after we complete our whole row of knit stitches, we're going to turn our work and start our next row. And again, it's going to be a whole row of knit stitches. So we're going to just knit this next row as well. Again, starting with a slip stitch purlwise. Okay, so now that I've done a few stitches, let's take a look and see, um, down here you can really see where the garter stitch starts to show itself. I'm going to set this aside and let's take a look at our finished product. So do you see where the ribbing moves into the garter? Now work this garter stitch until your garment has reached 26 inches. Now make sure it's comfortable for you, you may want more inches, you may want less, make sure you measure it before you start your cast off. Now for us, we wanted this to feel like a warm hug and this garter stitch is very stretchy. So it does that for us. Um, make sure it's comfortable for you. So before we begin our cast off, a um, couple things to keep in mind that um, one, we're going to start by knitting two stitches. We're not going to do a slip stitch purl wise. Okay, start your cast off by knitting the first two stitches. And then you're going to slip the first stitch over top of the second stitch. This does get a little tricky. Let's show that again. You're going to knit a stitch and then you're going to slide the loop from the first stitch over top of the second and then move it off the needle. Knit a stitch and again slide the first loop off the second we're going to show this a couple more times, that way you can see it. I know our camera is going in and out of focus. Um, if you have any questions about any of the stitches that we're showing you here today, make sure to take a look at the links in the description. There are further tutorials for each one of these stitches. Okay, so we've completed our cast off until we have one stitch left. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply snip the yarn, making sure we leave enough yarn to um, weave in our end. And then we're going to pull the yarn through the loop. So the next question is, is how do we get our garment to drape like this? Fold your garment so it, um, it makes this triangle shape. You're going to tack these edges here and up the side, only to about halfway. So you're going to tack here, you're going to end about here. 
So this is a beginning video and I'm not super concerned about seaming. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your darning needle and I'm using a contrasting color, but you're going to want to use a color that hides or a color that's very similar to the colors that are in your scarf. And then you're going to pinch here in the corner and flip it inside out. You're going to sew around the, your cast off and through a purl stitch. So your cast off and your, and your purl stitch. Sew up the side to about halfway and making sure that there's enough room for your head. As you can see here, we sewed some decorative buttons along the side for a finished garment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us on all of our social media profiles. Thanks for joining us and happy crafting!